Why should we let anybody in here? Huh? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's 9 o'clock, January 18th, 2022. I'd like to call the McLeod County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, good morning, everyone. Uh, I guess we start off today with a recognition. Anna? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm looking forward to have uh, both Mark and Paul come on up this morning. Uh, we're excited to recognize um, Paul Merkins, who's been on the Macaw County Planning Advisory Commission for nine years. Uh, so I'm just presenting the award today, but Mark's going to make a couple of um, remarks as well. We're grateful for your service. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Paul. And here much. is a up for you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll hand it over to Mark. Thank you. So just a quick highlight here. Um, use the microphone or not. Paul's been on our planning commission since 2013. He served his, his uh, nine years, three consecutive three-year terms. And a little bit bittersweet for me today, Paul's been a guiding force on that planning commission. We have a great planning commission. Um, you know, very good cross-section, but he's been one of those guys that's you know, very dedicated to the county. He shows up every meeting, he's very well prepared, and, um, sorry, and very appreciative for his service. And just a cute, quick few things um, to highlight his years of service. So Paul's been on the board, obviously, for nine years and dealt with issues such as the natural gas pipeline that ran into Broughton in 2013. He worked on our cluster system, that SSTS system that went into Bisky in 2014. Obviously, he's been around for the solar debate that we've had in McLeod County, and then also the Northern Natural Gas Pipeline that came through the county from north to south in 2018. So just a few things that he's worked on, and he's, like I said, he's been a guiding force for us, um, um, very knowledgeable in many, many different areas. So um, definitely appreciate his years of service, and he definitely will be missed. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> Before you sit down, Paul, I have to rem I have to say something. You know, I remember you probably don't remember me, but I remember with my kids in 4-H, and you were you must have been working on the, at the fairgrounds doing build, doing uh, registration and getting kids in and out. But I that's uh, I wanted to think how far back that was. You said nine years, and I thought, well, at the fair, that's that's over 30 years ago when I remember you there. So been there 48 years. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Paul, I just want to acknowledge your your. Uh, um, you're, you're helping community wide, and you're, you're, you're uh, you know, county fair development, and, and uh, was just brought up. And we have to definitely bring up your involvement at the state fair as well, um, as being a, a, a huge, a huge asset to our community, being able to serve at that capacity. But uh, years as a township board member, uh, serving on our planning commission, thank you so much for being involved. Thank you. Thanks for the appointment, by the way. I'm going to give him another hand. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, consideration of agenda items. No Any changes. Any additions or corrections? No. Yes, sir. Motion made by Commissioner Nagel to approve the the agenda items. Is there a second. second? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda. Move to approve. Motion. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Nagel, seconded by Commissioner Luthens to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion on it? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Agendas are, are approved. COVID-19. Barrett. Morning, Barrett. Good morning, everyone. This is my report uh, for today for um, Barrett, COVID. I'm sorry, but can you see if that's working? Just bring it closer to you. It's really. Can you hear me better? I think I'm going to bring you my microphone and trade. Okay. Grab turn them on. Oh. There we go. Okay. How's this? Is this better? Yes. Okay. Yep. Good. Good morning. Um, so 
So my COVID-19 um, statistical update, the numbers are from uh, Sunday, uh, January 16th, because of the Martin Luther King holiday, there are no numbers from yesterday. Um, as of that date, McLeod County has had a total of 8,561 positive cases of COVID-19, which is an increase of 622 new cases uh, since my last report at the county board meeting. There have been 374 new cases in the past two weeks, um, and 45 of those cases were cases of reinfection. So people who had COVID previously and are reinfected uh, again with um, COVID. Of those cases, 13 people needed to be hospitalized and one person was admitted to the ICU. Uh, there are currently 47 active cases that require isolation. And unfortunately, we have had 97 COVID-19 related deaths since the start of the pandemic, which is four more since my last report, which was two weeks ago. Um, it's important to point out that these numbers only include uh, the test results that are reported to the Minnesota Department of Health. So it does not include people who are testing at home, doing self-tests. Um, that data is not reported to the state of Minnesota. So these numbers are probably um, higher. We just don't know that for sure. Um, the things that are happening at the county, we did get a number of quick view tests from the Department of Health, 225 to be exact. Um, our goal was to distribute them um, by the end of the month to populations who it may be difficult to uh, get out and get tested. Um, we distributed them to food shelves, UCAP, Common Cup, the Hispanic Grocery Store, St. Pius uh, for the Spanish Mass, um, McLeod Alliance, foster care providers, veterans, um, and our case managers have been giving some to clients who may need. So the majority of those have been distributed and we're glad to get those in the hands of people who may need them. Uh, just some other things we're dealing with, uh, uh, new CDC guidelines for isolation and quarantine, which the Minnesota Department of Health um, has adopted. Just a lot of questions and concerns around that. Also new guidelines for daycare providers came out January 11th and dealing with a lot of questions and concerns in that area as well. Uh, to date, we have administered 10,785 doses of uh, either Pfizer or Moderna uh, COVID-19 vaccination. We have a clinic scheduled for this week on Thursday, January 20th. And as always, check out our website either for more statistics or to sign up for one of those COVID-19 um, clinics to get vaccinated, either first dose, second dose, booster. Uh, we are doing... Um, pretty much all ages, um, the five to 11 population, the 12 plus, 18 plus, um, anyone who is, is wanting to get uh, a vaccine, we can assist them. Um, our vaccination rates for the county as of January 12th, we're at 58.9% of people in McLeod County have received at least one dose. Um, that number creeps up slightly um, each week or every other week. <coughs> Hope to can see that uh, see that to continue to increase. Any questions for me? Uh, the only one I have, Bear, is, uh, is how many, is there a demand yet for for self-tests? Yes. There's, so we're still actually quite short. Yeah. Because I do get a number, I'm surprised at the number of people I talk to that, that are testing at home, and I'm sure they're not, a um, number of them testing positive, stay at home going through it. Thank right. God that they're, they're doing all right, but I was just wondering. I'm, I'm just surprised. Yeah, I think when stores get them on their shelves, as soon as people hear that they're available, they're bought out immediately. Any other questions for Barrett? <clears throat> thank you. Oh, thank you. Sheila, do you have anything? <clears throat> I apologize. Our audio is very difficult right now. We have a lot of people over in the side of the room. So if anyone needs to move, please do. And if anyone is going to speak, you have to be right by the microphone today. So because we have a frozen screen, we can't adjust. My um, COVID-19 update, as usual, is just about the Coronavirus Relief Fund Committee. We continue to work with the ARPA funds, the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, we did recently send a notice out to the cities and townships that the U.S. Department of Treasury um, did update their final guidance. So we're no longer working on an interim final guidance. Um, or final ruling, sorry, it is final. So if you have questions about that and you didn't receive it, please let me know. I did send it out to um, all of the cities and then to Tony, Donald, and someone else at the Township Association. Um, if you could distribute that, if you haven't, that would be appreciated. I believe we also sent it out to the media. 
Um, we will continue to meet. We have a meeting tomorrow for the funds for McLeod County, and I don't have any other updates besides we all know that the um, mandates changed over the past week, and it's been a very confusing time for employers, for the county, for our employees, and for all of your employees. So if there's anything we can help with with questions, let us know. Otherwise, I don't have anything to add with that. Any questions for Sheila? Hey, thank you. Um, thank you. If uh, on the on the hearing, if there's as if there's a problem with it, with anyone hearing, I guess I'm getting told that I'm not close enough either. So, uh, <laughs> if there's a trouble hearing, would you just raise your hand, and we'll see what we can do. It seems to be picking up. I don't know if somebody's tweaking it, but uh, now we've come time to have a, our public hearing um, uh, on the open burning ordinance. Um, if you, just a couple of rules, if you uh, want to speak to or against the ordinance, I'd appreciate it when you come up. Just wait your turn at the mic, state your name and where you're from or who you're representing, and um, we'll go from there. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Nagel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Luthens. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, open the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, how do we want to proceed with this? Do we want to go just go into public input, or do we want to read through the ordinance? Uh, Mr. Chair, we typically don't read through an ordinance that's been included in the packet. That is... If you have something you want highlighted, um, I believe that anyone who asked to be updated was provided with a copy. We sent it to the Township Association. Um, so if there are questions on it, I would think it would be fit for people to come to the microphones up there. Yeah, thanks. I've, I've read through it a couple, a couple of different times. Uh, we did, you know, we have done some changes, but uh, I guess anybody that wants to speak towards the ordinance, I, it, it, when you give your name, uh, go to the section you're speaking towards or, or what, what you have to say. Mr. Chair, if I might add, um, most of this is based upon what the Minnesota statute is, 88.18, excuse me, yeah, 88.17 is, is the statute. We had, we've had drafts that have been kicking around for about the last six to, to nine months, and we did a redraft about two to three months ago in consultation with the fire chiefs uh, to, to come up with what would conform with state statute. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, the, yeah, I remember going through a number of workshops. I've talked to a few of the town board members. Um, there's been questions on it. I. Uh, I've read through it, honestly, um, to my opinion, I, I have not seen anything in there that that we have much control over it for as far as changes. Uh, I know there was some friendly uh, stuff given to us and uh, it was kicked back because it wasn't in, conf in line with the DNR and the state. And I have the same questions probably that a lot of you have on the ordinance. Um, <clears throat> I remember when this started, we attended um, a township meeting, and, and uh, that's when we poked the sleeping bear, in my, my words again. But uh, it was just, it was as it was, but there was a number of township officials that questioned whether they needed to write burning permits. <clears throat> and everyone on the burning permit, I, I've talked to n n numerous people, um, it's right on the permits that I, all of them that I've seen, you have to call it in regardless. I mean, otherwise the permit is not valid. Um, anything in it that I've looked through, anything that you can and can't burn has already been in statute um, for a long time, whether you like it or don't like it. But uh, again, I'm, I'm willing to hear any questions or comments on the ordinance. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Yeah, I, we went to the township meetings there were some questions, concerns that were brought forward. A lot of the things that were suggested could be in there, right, because the, it would contradict the statute. So, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me. So, I guess this is where people were supposed to talk. So, 
Robert Anderson, 1545 Adams Street, Hassan Valley. I'm representing myself. And I'm speaking to Section 8, Responsibility. That's on page 3. This is about calling in. Years ago, throughout the years, when I would call, I would talk to an individual, give them the information. About two to three months ago, well, more than that, back in uh, September, October, I did a burn, I talked to a machine. If I remember correctly, the machine said they'd call me back. They never did. So I went ahead and did the burn. I called back when the fire was out, got the same recording, gave a message, no one has called me yet. If I'm, if I'm correct, that the, the machine stated that. So what's, how are we going to uh, function on this? What's going to happen? Are we talking to a machine? Is a machine going to give us some kind of a number? A verification number? What are we doing? It isn't spelled out here, in my opinion. So uh, if you uh, have answers for that, I would like to hear them. And I hope you do answer that before you pass this ordinance. Do we have anyone here from dispatch? Mr. Chair, we do Tim's, not have Tim's here. Oh, yeah. I've, I've made a several callings. I've never, up to this time, I've never talked to a machine, but with what's all going on, it doesn't surprise me a lot. No, what we did is when we took over dispatching for the city of Hutch, we implemented a calling tree. On that calling tree, it gives you five options to listen for, one of which is this button for dispatch, and then it, that will transfer you into dispatch. If you don't hit any of the options, then it gives you an opportunity to leave a, a message. How often do those messages you check? A couple times a day. The weekends would be an issue. Could be an issue if you leave a message because that's answered by our clerical staff. So I've obviously listened to the calling tree, right? Yep. Thousands of times already. But if you if you pay attention to the prompts, you can speak to a person. Correct. Right. So is this always going to continue? For the immediate until we get fully staffed, yes. Our hope is once we get fully staffed and dispatch that we can go away from the calling tree. We went to the calling tree because when we took over the city of Hutch, the number of administrative calls that weren't dispatch related went through the roof. So that's why we did the calling tree. Personally, I hate those things and I want to get away from it, but we can't until we get the staffing. So as soon as we leave a message, we're afraid to burn. I'm not, you. if you have a deputy that responds, you'd be able to advise them that you did call in and left, leave a message. The issue is right now is they won't be able to retrieve that message. The deputy. Now, what's the answer to my question? Bob, yes or answer, no? The answer the is, question if, you listen, is if you listen to the calling tree and hit the number, you will speak to a person. I was just going to I, I did not get an option to speak to anyone. You, you have several you. options. You have jail, civil <clears throat> process, records, dispatch, and I believe there's one other one. And that's uh, all the time? Correct. So we would be able to talk to a person then? Yep. If we hit dispatch? Correct. Okay. Uh, very good. And that's the way it's going to continue. And I want to get rid of that thing, but for right now, yes. Okay, that thank you. Yep. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Chair, question for go Tim ahead. before you go. Yeah, Tim, um, in regards to the calling tree, um, <coughs> does it go into the calling tree whether you're using the non-emergency sheriff's number or, the, you know, the it's, regular 911 or? It's the non-emergency sheriff's number and the non-emergency Hutchinson, what used to be, the, I think, the 2242 number that goes there. 911 still goes to dispatch, obviously, so, yeah, it's just the non-emergency number. And just for clarification before you sit down, if if for some reason a person either didn't know or doesn't get to a person that's on, and it's on record that you called it in, um, is that going to be... Is that Mike gonna and I have had several discussions on, on uh, the ordinance and just the statute. Neither one of us can remember a time in the last how many years where somebody's actually been cited or charged with anything. I would hope uh, that common sense would prevail in this matter and once we find out that there was a message left that it would be taken care of. We have had a couple that have been careless fires where um, a person lit a fire and it, it consumed a, an electrical box and things like that that we have char charged out but that had nothing to do with notification. All right, is there, before you do sit down, is there any questions either by the board or 
uh, from the staff for Jerry. <coughs> Please give your name. Uh, Tony House on Winston Township. Um, I guess the question to Tim is, so does the 1888 number does still apply then to get to the calling tree? Because that's how we've been notified for the townships to let have people call in. So the number that I know goes is the 864-3134 number. The toll-free number, I would have to double-check, but I want to say it should because they both end up in the same spot. But I can double-check that. Okay, sure. we need to verify that because that's what the townships are using. It's a 1888. The toll-free number. Yeah, yep. I don't remember what the rest of it is. So. Yep. But, okay. I would have to double-check on that. I can okay. it. That'd be good. Okay. I, I, I would just, I should never assume. Uh, we'll have to make sure that when, when and if this ordinance passes that that number if What's they're no that? longer giving permits with that number on it, it's on our websites or it's put out to everybody concerned that uh, they have the right number. I'll go figure out that number and call it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Tim. Tony, do you have anything else? Yeah, no. Um, so when this whole thing started, um, you know, I think this is in the direction of goodness and where we want to go with the call and versus writing um, burning permits. Um, when, when this all started, we found out actually at the township level that there were fire department members that actually were writing up burn permits for township uh, um, members. So I just want to thank the fire departments that have done that in the past. A um, couple things on this that I do have questions on is when we had the discussion uh, at the township level, we talked about making this a rural only. And I just wanted to ask the question, I see that it's considered countywide, just, and I'm sure there's a reason, but I just want to ask the question. Any, any unit, whether it be city or a township, can enact a more restrictive ordinance than this county ordinance, but <clears> nobody <throat> can, restrict, can enact a less restrictive one. And ours pretty much follows what the state statute is, so you can't, and you can't make it any less restrictive than the state statute. So any governmental unit other than the school district has the right to enact their own ordinance. But this applies to both townships and two cities. Okay, um, second question I had is, <clears throat> so inside of the, uh, uh, the ordinance, there's discussion about having a minimum three foot diameter uh, burn ring. Does the county intend to enforce that? That is a state statute, and if you listen to my prior re re response, we, we've charged out about two careless fires in the last, I've been here 39 years. I mean, this isn't something that, that we're going out and going to measure, whether it's 35 or 37 inches. But those, those numbers come from the state statute. So there isn't any way to eliminate that because they just... Yes, there is. The legislature can change what their statute is, but there's no way that McLeod County can, can change that. Okay. And, and Tony, I just add is what I've said. I've had a number of people ask that same question. I don't think any of our... Our staff, and I don't think Tim's going to send his staff out with a tape measure to see if anybody's four or eight inches. Common sense has to prevail here somewhere. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, I would hope, I, but, you know, it seems like every time we keep putting all these rules and regulations in place, and it seems to be almost, I don't know, like a hollow threat or something, but, you know, I'm not Virtually sure Virtually everything here is, is what's currently in state statute. The only difference is the, the calling it. Um, third question I guess I had is so under section six, uh, section E, we had down may be liable and in here it now says you are liable. I just wanted to ask the question why the chain may versus, because basically you're indicating you're guilty. No, it's state statute. If, if you start a fire, you're, you're in charge of that fire. Okay, but things happen, right? Hey. <laughs> so you may be liable. We don't determine the, the county doesn't determine the liability. That's going to be up to to a court and to your insurance company and all that. Again, I'll comment on that as well. Not, it's not a rationalization, but, but I, I do a, a number of burns. I've said that before. Um, and I, before I light that match, I just do a lot of things to make sure that mm -hmm. I, that I don't, that I'm not having to pay for a fire call or burn or talk, call my insurance man that I burned the neighbor's cornfield down. So, I, I mean, I, there has to, again, common sense yeah. has to prevail somewhere. 
No, there does, and there has to be. I agreed with that. So, um, and again, it's nothing we put in here. I can't think of any. Some may come up today that we missed. I, I can't think of anything that we as a county board or in our workshops or in the sheriff's department added in here. Um, I, I think Mike is better to answer that question right. than I am. But go, go ahead and finish your questions, okay. please. Uh, the, only, the last question I had was um, we've had the instance where people are burning maybe over multiple days. And I don't know if in the ordinance it specifies anywhere maybe we need to that does someone need to call in every day if they're doing a burn that's going to last multiple days. And it's not explicitly stated and it was discussed at one point. I'm just wondering is that something we should state in there or not state? Because otherwise we're going to have people like, you know, they do a burn and it lasts two, three days. Well, it's actually in here that you, if the fire is smoldering, and that, that's one of the things I questioned. I mean, you, you're technically supposed to be there the way the ordinance reads. If you've got a, a smoldering log in the middle of a, of a grass fire, mm -hmm. you're technically supposed to be there supervising that fire. And someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but, I mean, you either have to be there or you have to uh, put it out if you're if you're not going to attend that fire. I, I um, again, um, I have I've done burns and when I call back in, when you call in, I, you all know that when you call in, it asks you the dispatch asks you to call back when it's out, and I've been commented several times from dispatch that that uh, they appreciated the call back, and not many people do. So I, I, there again, I, it's just yeah. the hurdles we have to go through. But. Understood, understood. So, um, so that was kind of my last question, I guess. So the only other thing that I just want to bring before the board is the McLeod County Association of Townships does have a meeting coming up on the 24th. So I'm not sure if you're planning on, on voting on this today or not. Um, but those were my questions. I know there's some other people that probably have some other questions, but um, I do think that this is in the step uh, in the right direction. So I do, you know, think that we should keep moving forward um, with this. So I just want to thank everybody for the time. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. And, and with, regard <coughs> with regard to the smoldering fire issue, you have to put it out or else you have to be there, and that's the state law. That's, and that's just in, in, incorporated by our ordinance. Okay. Um, a question came to mind that I had not thought of before. Uh, and Mark's here, you might, you might have the answer to this question. Through some of our, uh, um, um, our permitted areas, our, our uh, junkyards, uh, 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 different permits that we have given in them permits is you cannot burn on those premises. Can you comment on that a little bit, Mark? Conditional use permits, Conditional if, you, use. if you feel that there is something that's relative to the request, you can condition that. So without speaking specifically to yours, we have in the past, I know since I've been here in 23 plus years that we have in the past had conditions on there, you know, where we want to make sure that there's no burning being allowed in a certain area. Um, as far as the condition being placed on there, I think it was more of a general statement, you know, as far as making sure that safety was priority. But if you have a request, a, a conditional use application, you do have that ability to condition that you know, to make sure that um, safety is, is adhered to. Well, it makes perfect sense. I just didn't know it existed until this came about and was on the agenda, and I got some calls, and I, I didn't know. It makes perfect sense to me if, you know, if it's a safety issue, but thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Mike Schumann, Hutchinson Fire Chief and President of the McLeod County Fire Chiefs Association. Uh, first... Uh, Mike, did you want me to comment specifically on anything that was... Just that, that our ordinance is not more restrictive than the state statute. If you would, Mike, that would... Okay, so I guess the, the short answer is everything that you could and couldn't do under this, what we're using today, which is a state statute document, this two-part copy, you can or can't do moving forward if you guys change uh, or approve this ordinance. So nothing is changing. It's just that some of the stuff is specifically the uh, recreational fire. I mean, there's a lot of discussion on that and the size and of that, but that is, has been a three-foot circle for the last multiple decades by state statute. We don't have the, we can make it smaller, but we can't make it bigger. Um, so that's a kind of a moot point because uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's been three foot for decades per state statute. So that is unchangeable. Um, I think what I would like to just comment, uh, there's several fire department representatives here 
uh, and just from the perspective of the Fire Chiefs Association uh, in McLeod County here, we support this process. We think that this ordinance will be better for the property owners. It's going to be simpler. Um, it's going to be simpler for all of the township representatives as far as those that have write, had to write permits in the past and track people down and catch up on that and, and try to get it done in a timely fashion. So, and I think ultimately public safety will be improved because, because the process is easier. Um, the hope is more people will call in. I, I know that in the past there's been people that maybe they couldn't track down somebody to get a permit. They just decided to burn anyway because the conditions are right, which we don't want that to happen. I think this process eliminates that, meaning it's so easy, pick up the phone, call, get your approval to burn. Um, and, and it's truly that, that simple. So I think really the only thing that's being changed by approving this is we're just eliminating this book. All the state statute stuff that was in there is still in there. We haven't added to that. We haven't changed that. This, the draft that's in front of you is the Renville ordinance that was the requested document to, to a mirror. And that's where you're at. So I guess, again, from the County Chiefs Association, we support it. We think it's uh, beneficial to everyone. Questions for me while I'm still up here? Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Um, can you describe what happens? Somebody calls in with their fire call. What happens in the next half an hour, hour, as other people driving down the highway see this fire and call in? What does dispatch do? They know where the fire is, but what what happens if there's another fire half a mile away? Understand what I'm asking? Yes, that is the blessing and the curse of cell phones today. Um, so if somebody calls in, they're going to burn a brush pile. They call in and say, I'm burning a brush pile at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 200 Street. Um, dispatch documents that obviously it is, if it's visible smoke, and it's especially if it's near Highway 7, Highway 22, Highway 15, high traffic roads, no doubt that there's going to be people, citizens that call that in. Um, and that might be a question for Chief Langenfeld, wherever he went to. But typically, they try to get the information from the caller. Um, Tim, you can jump in here, sir. Typically, if it's, if it's a really large fire, we'll get multiple calls. But if they got a fire that's logged in the area, they will notify a deputy, and then a deputy will respond to check that out before they page out the entire fire department. Now, if we're, we are getting multiple calls, depending on where the deputy is, if the deputy is in Stewart and this call is up by Winstead, a lot of times they will page fire for that just because it's going to take the deputy a half hour to get there. So to be on, on the safety side, they, there is times that people will get, will get paid. And we currently deal with that same situation. So. so the fire department could end up at the fire could. on a fire call. It's possible, yes. Yeah. Typically, it's if, it, if it's a really large burn and people are a long ways away, or like Mike said, it's on a major highway, they get multiple calls. To be on the safe side, we will start fire. Um, but once they get there and find out it's controlled burn, they're not extinguished. Not to speak for fire, but typically they're not extinguishing. And if there's somebody there monitoring that kind of stuff, it's just we're not going to eliminate all of those. We're just hoping to. Mike, can you go into detail how you'll just send one guy? Like, yeah, I think uh, so. What the Hutchinson Fire Department would do, we would send our fire officer. If they didn't have a deputy that was close and they were getting enough calls where there was a concern, they would dispatch the fire department officer. Uh, we run an officer only program, so we'll send one fire officer out there first. Um, and if deemed necessary, we scale it up or scale it back from there. And I think some of the other departments are, are some do that, some don't. But um, ultimately, a deputy would go first if possible, and then the fire department next. Well, the other question that I would have, Mike, is, is in your association, is there, there going to be a cost to the, the, to the guys that did the burn as long as he did it according to ordinance, or is he going to get charged for the call? I, I don't, you know what I'm, what I'm trying to get at? I mean, it's a legal burn, but. Well, Correct. this ordinance do, does not address that, but that same situation is in place now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the short answer is every, each fire department handles that differently. Uh, Hutchinson, we do not charge for service, so we wouldn't charge, but ultimately, and maybe some of the other fire department folks can speak up, if there's no extinguishment done, it's basically like a canceled call or a, 
a moot call, is that correct? We got representatives from Winstead, Silver Lake, and Lester here. They're all nodding yes. If they don't do anything, there's not going to be a charge. And for I service. understand that. We, we all, you know, in this, especially in today's world, we have to yield to caution. So, I mean, you know, and I, just what you're saying, if there's two calls, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to hear everybody's, somebody's going to respond because it's very possible to have, especially on some of these areas where they burn, I have a place where there, I have no 911 number. I have to give landmark marks and the best I can to where it is. So, I mean, that possibility is there and, you know, safety is probably number one, but I appreciate that at least you're thinking about it. You know, I think in the, the any, any frustration from the fire department perspective is when somebody's burning that hasn't called in. You know, if you haven't done the process, you haven't gotten the permit, you haven't called in, there's a lot of times where uh, Chief Langefeld and, and myself and some of the, the chiefs will discuss weather. We might be in a situation where, and that's in this document, that, hey, the weather is very, very dry right now. The winds are high for the next two, three days. We're in that kind of gray area of burning ban or not burning ban, and the D we work with the DNR and put those stipulations in place. Sometimes it's just for a day or two or three in extreme conditions. Um, and we have that latitude to do that. And again, if the permit process is easy and they just make the phone call, they will be notified that, hey, you can't burn today because of the weather conditions. And that's, again, that's the important thing we're trying to gain from this is eliminate the paper copy, make it a simple phone call, it's gonna be better for everybody. Any more questions? <clears throat> I was able to verify that the toll free oh, number I mean, does to, go to our calling tree. To the, is there any more for Mike or Tim? Either from the audience or from? Yes. Mr. Chair and Tim, just before, to be clear huh. with everybody that's in the room, will any number work that we call the Sheriff's Office, whether it's the non-emergency, whether it's the, uh, the uh, 911, um, technically, yes, we do not want people calling 911 to report that they're starting a burn. If they have concerns about a burn being out of control or getting too close, obviously that is 911. But the majority of these calls should either be our 864-3134 number or the toll-free number. And then I'll follow up with another question, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Um, are we, um, let's say, if we do adopt this ordinance, will there be some type of educational piece put out uh, in the media? Um, to alert our public of a change on how things are being done? Has it has the ordinance itself been posted in the paper? Mr. Chair, we would post the ordinance once it's passed by the board if there's a change. We don't want to cause confusion. So we don't release ordinances in progress. But if this is approved, it will go to the media through a release. And I don't, I mean, again, my opinion, uh, it's not changing a great deal. It's not really changing. I mean, the number is there. Your permit's not, if in writing, isn't valid if you don't call it in. So I don't see a lot of changes, but that doesn't mean with our improved websites and different things now that we can't post different things. So, Mr. Chair, the uh, ordinance isn't valid until it's published after you approve it. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it would be good to note that, uh, as Mr. Hauslevin said, too, the that toll-free number, that 888-440-3134, I think we need to do everything in our power to make that, that shouldn't change. I mean, there's been enough people calling in permits for years. If we can not change the number, leave it as it has always been, that would be ideal. And I think that's probably the plan, right? Correct. Thank you. Jeff, did you have a question for those yeah, two? Yeah, for both of them, actually, or one of them. State your name uh, first. Jeff Kosek, I'm from Sumter Township. And I was just wondering, um, this is a personal experience, but I had a controlled burn going, and all of a sudden a state trooper comes flying up the road because I live by Highway 15. Um, and he's running around like crazy. Do they have the ability to get this information that you called in to the state troopers? Do they get it from the sheriff's office or not? Or yeah, they, they should be able to get the whole of our dispatch on, on the radio and ask the same questions. They monitor. They're on their own channel, uh, but they monitor. But if one is talking, the other one isn't hearing type thing. So they would have the ability to either call by phone or just go to our channel and ask if there's a controlled burn in the area. Okay, because that kind of scares the heck out of you when they yep. come up with the lights on. <laughs> it's like you're doing something wrong, but you're not. Yep. So I just wanted to make yeah, sure they, that they have the ability to... 
Yep. Get that they can either do it directly or they can have their dispatch contact our dispatch and go that route. Because they would need to go through us anyway <coughs> if they wanted fire started. So. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anything? Don Lawbreck with Township Association, also with Penn Township. Uh, I am looking at uh, Section 7, uh, our running fires. I appreciate the incorporation of the wording that the Township Association gave you and that you incorporated into the ordinance. And apparently it all meets legal, that there's no problems with that. Uh, I'm looking at specifically the running fires number three and how they're going to be handled. Uh, when, uh, and basically what we're going to be seeing mostly for running fires out there are probably a lot of burning of drainage ditches, uh, CRP ground, and non-cropped areas that people want to clean off. Are we going to be able to burn immediately upon calling in as a running fire as we have been in the past because the townships were allowed to write the running fires? Here, at the, the, as it states, the uh, county will make the determination, but is there a time lag to that or is it immediately? There, there is no time lag in, in, in the ordinance. Okay, thank you. Uh, the other thing and that uh, Don, goes Don, uh, Don, back. I could just comment on that. We did talk a little bit about that. And again, it's more emphasizing the conditions at the time you're going to do the running fire, is to keep in mind. But well, I, 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 my question, or basically what I was coming around, will the dispatcher have that authority to go ahead and say, yep, you're, you're ready to go? Yes, it's still up uh, by statute. It's still up to the person doing the burn to make sure that they're doing it in uh, uh, a good fashion, not to be causing trouble and so forth. Mr. Chair, just for clarification, the dispatcher would say, "Yes, I've been notified." They don't tell someone they're good to go with the fire, correct? I mean, that's not their responsibility, or they're just. Well, if there is a burning ban, then they then they would be aware of that. Right. So they could tell them if there's that, but they would just confirm they've received notification and don't know why they wouldn't be able to proceed. Is that? I just want to make sure. I, I share. I mean, obviously, it gets into the common sense that you can't, even if you're burning legally and you have a south wind and you're burning on the on the uh, south side of Highway 212 and the smoke's going across the road. You're you're. I don't care how right you are. You're still wrong. So uh, you're going to cause a safety issue. Right. I think ultimately it, it uh, goes to the, the dispatcher is not, they're, just, they're logging the person X is burning today. There's no burning ban. That's it. They're, they're not going through the details of they're burning two acres or a dredge ditch or 60 acres of CRP. They're not looking at any of that. It's, it's the weather and you're calling in, and that's, that's truly the end of it. And it's up to the person lighting the match to know what they're doing. And the only reason I ask that question is if you go on the DNR uh, website and, and you get into some of these special conditions for burns, there seems to be a lag time before they have to give you a determination whether you can or can't do the running fire. And, and uh, I just didn't want us to lose that privilege that we've had here and it's worked as far as I know it's worked good since we started the burning permits so thank you for that uh, the only other thing then I would be looking at is, is the uh, right back in the adoption the, the last sentence uh, where we had asked that it be rural McLeod County and, and part of the reason was is to have a little bit more control of if there were going to be any changes made. I do appreciate the wording that you did put in, 
but basically all it's all that will be is the county board will have to some way notify and whether it's an email or whatever it is that they're planning on possibly making a change I would appreciate if that could be a little well it gets down to the point where either that it has to come before a public hearing before some change was made and if that is the case and is the way you interpret this the uh, ordinance as it is I would like to see it stated well number one it's not going to get stated but the only way that the county can enact an ordinance or change an ordinance is to give public notice hold a public hearing have a meeting like this adopt it and then publish it and then it becomes effective well if that is the way the procedure is going to be followed I can it's, it's just that uh, as you go through at some places we left wording out and yes in state statute like the misdemeanor situation uh, the costs and so on that's already in state statute and it was just a clarification in the original one and I guess I just look at it as a clarification here if there would be a little more verbiage to that. Thank you. Thanks. And I, I, I we, we discussed that and I'm, I'm personally I'm satisfied with, the, with the, what we have to go through to change an ordinance. I, you can tell by the room and our notification system we, we attend township meetings or, 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 or even this, or your countywide meetings and we're in a um, with the with the with the IT today with phones and everything. We're pretty much in touch with everyone. So, I'm personally I'm satisfied. Mr. Chair, go ahead. <clears throat> I've been a commissioner for seven years now, <clears throat> and we complicate a lot of stuff, right? This is not. This is something that's uncomplicated, <laughs> and it helps everybody out. So with that, I'm going to move to adopt the open burning ordinance. I'll second that. I'm going to accept the motion uh, by Commissioner Nagel and second from from Commissioner Wright. Is there any discussion? Now go ahead and I'll, I'll take your discussion or your question. Okay. During discussion. I, I'm concerned about the mechanics of this thing. Okay, I have issued a burning permit already. Can you talk closer to the mic? We're having a hard. My, time. my name is Verl Becker. I represent myself, but I'm on the Penn Township Board. Okay. I'm interested in the mechanics of this thing. Um, I've issued a burning permit already. Do I continue to issue burning permits or, or what, what do I do? The second thing is I edit a newsletter that goes out to all the residents of the township and it goes out um, on end of February, beginning of March, not announcing the township day and the variety of kinds of things that are going to be going on in the township. Are you going to issue a pamphlet that you could I could insert in my newsletter, so that I so I could send it out to everybody? To answer or, that, the the uh, permit that you've been issuing is no no more. Everybody has a general permit, and the only way that you that you activate it is by calling into the dispatch saying I'm going to start a fire, on this and this place. But but. Um, what Mr. do I Chair. what do I put in my newsletter? How how is the public going to get a copy of this kind of thing so they can see it? You know, what, Mr. Where? Chair, Mr. Becker, we'd be happy to do that for you. It's not I that mean, difficult. If, if we do our own county newsletter. You are also welcome to. They are they all have access to it. We mail a copy to anyone that asks. It's always available online. But myself and Liz Danielson will help you with that separately. Okay, that's not difficult. But but and, and I, the, I, the other thing is that. You, the ordinance should express very clearly what telephone number you call and how you call and all that kind of thing because uh, I don't know if it's even written in here who, what the telephone number is. Mr. Chair? I don't you, guess that the telephone number would pertain to the ordinance. Anyway, that could be changed, but we, will make, that, sure, that, that we will make sure that the number is very well stated and what number, Tim's working on that as well, and if there's more than one number, I'm, I've heard today that there's an 88 number that I don't I don't call I call an 864 number Mr. But Chair go ahead in ordinance ordinances don't change often especially one that just follows state statute phone numbers change things change you know that remember when all of Minnesota is 612 we don't typically list a phone number in something like that we put it in the places that are updated often we have very good website we have we have phone numbers we have print materials but it probably would not be added to that the, and that would the, be why. In, in my newsletter, 
I will have a paragraph relating to the burning ordinance and what you've adopted and those kind of things. And if I you want to, as a township board member and a clerk, have, you have could have go a, ahead and do this. We'll, we'll help yeah, you out with any addition. No I mean, any township can still, uh, we're not trying to run any townships. You, if you want to send a letter out to, your, to all your constituents, that's a great idea in my opinion, but, but uh, and that can be added in as well. We can handle that separately. You, can, you have my information, we've spoken separately about other things. Just contact me and we'll help you. That, that is helpful to us that you're wanting to communicate. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Just, you know, we, we started out with the goal of how do we have it so the townships no longer have to write the permits. That was the request that we heard. And this is pretty, pretty simple. It's what the state statute has been for years. It's what's printed. It's what's printed here. Uh, the only way it can go forward is to make it more restrictive, and I haven't heard of any interest whatsoever in that. So this is about as simple and as straightforward as it's going to get. Um, again, the line in here, any changes to this ordinance will not be made until local units of governments are consulted. And the fact that it's an ordinance pretty well makes it clear that we're doubling up on the fact that it has to be a very, very open process to change whatsoever. Um, the rules and regulations that, have, that people have been burning um, uh, fires on in the past are the same as what's moving forward again because we have state law here. So I, I think this is just, this is very simple. Um, this is an ordinance of public safety. Definitely want to thank everybody for coming. It's nice to have a lot of people here today. Um, <laughs> it usually doesn't happen this way. So uh, to the town board members and all those involved in public safety, thank you for, for attending uh, today. But uh, I. I think that this is about as simple and as straightforward as, as we can make this process. Um, called dispatch. That's what it comes down to. So. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Wright, seconded by Commissioner Luthens to close the public hearing. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, motion carries and the public hearing is closed. Behind the yellow ribbon. Good morning. Good morning. Introduce Good yourself, morning. please. I know, yeah. I know who you are, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm Dave Heiderbrink. I'm the chairman of the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon. And we don't have any controversies today, so we should be able to. <laughs> and I'm Brianna Lauer. I'm the assistant CBSO here from McLeod County. Um, yeah, we're here to just to give you some information, some accomplishments that we did last year. Um, due to the pandemic, we had to um, cancel a few meetings. Hopefully, the pandemic is going to get better and we'll be able to proceed a lot better. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the accomplishments that we did last year. I think you have information there if you want to just follow along. Yep, and we're also including 2020 um, due to the fact it wasn't done um, prior to that, too. So, we included the 2020 and 2021. So. Okay. Uh, we'll start here, August 2020, sixth annual Welcome Home Recognition event. Stakeholders, 13 donators, provided eight gift bags for veterans who came off of active duty and returned to McLeod County between August 1st, 2018 and July 31st, 2019. All eight veterans were hand delivered their bags to the county fair being canceled. Uh, another item, graduating senior recognition. Flag pins were donated by the DAV, Chapter 37, for the McLeod County Beyond the Yellow Ribbon to present to graduating seniors who have committed to joining the military after high school. Uh, nine seniors from McLeod County received a pin, which included Hutchinson, Glencoe, and Lester Prairie. Uh, at our next stakeholder engagement in 2020 to early 2021, uh, we did it during our monthly stakeholder meetings. Multiple stakeholders presented what their services are and how they can help McLeod County veterans currently serving uh, service members and their families. Now presented them was the Yellow Ribbon Outreach Coordinator of Southern Minnesota, Welcome Home Vet, the McLeod County Veteran Service Officer, and Lutheran Social Services. Uh, August 22, 20 and 20, excuse me, August 22nd, 2021. Seventh annual Welcome Home Recognition event. Stakeholders, 45 donators, provided eight gift bags for veterans who came off of active duty 
and, and uh, returned to McLeod between August 1st, 2019 and July 31st, 2020. Uh, one of the eight veterans were presented with their bag at the McLeod County Fair. Re remaining bags were hand delivered. Then we had graduating senior recognition. Uh, flag pins were donated by the DEV Chapter 37 for the McLeod County Beyond the Ribbon to present the graduating seniors who have committed to joining the military after high school. Uh, 14 seniors from McLeod County received a pin. They were from Hutchinson, Glencoe, Winstead, and Lester Prairie. Uh, another stakeholder engagement. During our monthly stakeholder meetings, a few stakeholders presented what their services are and they can, what they can do to help McLeod County veterans, currently serving service members and their families. Presenters included McLeod County Veteran Service Officer, the BOC Director for the U.S. Small Business Administration. Um, another assistance provided was assisting the new McLeod County veteran who had got to be moving into a home, a different home. And then the other things that we wanted to do were, uh, because of the COVID, we weren't able to get a lot done. Uh, the last thing we have on here is the current projects. New presenters for this upcoming year to produce more stakeholders engagement, getting more people involved in our meetings. Um, August 2020, eighth annual Welcome Home Recognition event at the McLeod County Fair. Uh, currently preparing for the next year with drafting letters for sponsors. And then uh, we're tracking right now four veterans who have been returned home since August. And when we, what we do is during the fair, um, we, uh, during the demolition derby, we recognize these veterans that, that uh, just came back from service from deployment. So that's kind of mainly what we do. That's kind of our big thing at the county fair. So, and I don't, Brianna, if you have any other questions? Um, just a caveat is what we, since um, as of today, we actually, with updating our page, we actually made sure that all the resources that are on the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon page, they are all current. Um, so we've actually taken a couple off and added some on there. So everything on the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon page should be up to date. So that's something that hasn't been done for a period of time. So I made sure that was all up to date on our page. So now anyone who goes to our page, the resources should be there. So Any thank you. I, well, I hope everybody, I know this is on YouTube yes. and there's people, I, I, I beg them to pay attention to this. I've been um, watching or active in it for a number of years and, right. and COVID didn't help us at all, no. uh, especially the challenges with veterans coming home that don't want recognition or just want to be left alone. And this has hurt us a little bit. I know there's been some challenges and I've gotten, I'm commander at the Legion here in Glencoe and we get a lot of phone calls with the appreciation of those bags. And you can tell by, um, as they're being used, you can tell uh, that mm -hmm. they are being used. I mean, they're not, you, know, you can tell by the tickets coming through or the Glanco bucks or whatever's done. Right. You can tell they are being used and they are being appreciated. But the challenges, um, the reason it's so dear to my heart is suicide rates and depression among right. veterans is staggering. And um, and I, anything we can do, and I hope, uh, I thank Dave and, and the leadership in behind the Yellow Ribbon. We've been fortunate in McLeod County to have some guys that really put in some hard work yeah. to, to get this done. So. I will say this year, um, with COVID, even in 2021, we actually surpassed what has been done in the years before. So what's nice is that you do, I think it's the approach, it's we really advocated going out and outreaching to the community um, to get more sponsors this year. So um, that is something that we are striving again to do this next year for Welcome Home is to surpass, to continue to surpass what we've done in the past. So, um, but we had a lot of um, sponsors added this year, which was amazing, and that amount was amazing. So. Mr. More and more Chair? sponsors. Oh, yes, go ahead. Sorry. Nope. I wanted to say thank you to Bree because she updated the logo, I believe, with the yes. Beyond the Yellow Ribbon Committee. And recently, our McLeod County employees had the chance to buy a shirt, a red shirt, to wear on Fridays for right. to not just recognize our, our service members who are um, serving right now, but all in our communities. And we had over 90 people throughout um, your organization right. and our employees buy a shirt 
and we were able Great. to take a photo and our people who are not with us right now that are serving are going to be home soon and we're very excited to present that to them we got to talk to their families um, thank you for letting us use that logo on our shirt we see them come here on a friday dave yes. and you'll see that people really appreciated that okay, and they, we'll that. Yeah, they enjoy wearing to, them. Uh, the bfw so. or the yeah. DAV and get your mm -hmm. shirt there. Please. Yes, I should, I should. Yes, if you don't have it, get it. They're nice shirts. <laughs> so thank you yeah. for doing that. And thank, thank you for you. your support. Thank you for doing that, all too. Of you. And, uh, and the DAV, I, I, don't, I hate to single anybody out because all our veterans groups are outstanding in McLeod County. We, I made some comments a while ago that we're, we have less problems than a lot of counties with handling our veterans. But um, the DAV goes over and above what yes, they need they do. to do in that. And, and it's a lot of the same people, but I, but I appreciate it. And uh, in your comment to the demolition derby, yes, it's a good place to have it because the crowd, the, the stands are usually full. <laughs> yep. and, um, and when you give out the awards, the appreciation from the crowd is they bring yep. flags along. And, and obviously, it's been a challenge with the fair being canceled one year right. and now back. But it, it was, I was there last year. We presented colors, and yep. it was it was full, full house. And we honor all veterans yep. during that, that mm -hmm. time. So, yeah. Great Any questions? Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. You betcha. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Great. Great report. Environmental Service, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we do have three items this morning. Item A is to consider approval of the renewal of an agreement for services with Carver County Environmental Service Department to review, approve, and or inspect type four and five advanced subsurface sewage treatment systems at a rate of $60 an hour, not to exceed $2,500 from January 1, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. This is an extension. We've had this request in front of you the last two years. We currently do not have an advanced designer or advanced inspector license in our office. Typically, these are for systems that are more than 5,000 gallons and or uh, type four systems that homeowners are going to or they have constraints like a multi-flow system. And we do have one contractor in our county that does utilize multi-flow. So we'll look at to see if it's advantageous for us to send somebody to get that cert certification this year. Um, we have seen systems the last two years, but this cost is not um, an expense to McLeod County because these are pass-through costs that we send to the applicant if we do need review of a Type 4 or 5 system. Questions for Mark? Mr. Chair, go ahead. Move to approve request. Motion made by Commissioner Smalls to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Luthens. Uh, <clears throat> any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item B is consider approval of proposal from AKO Electric in Glencoe, Minnesota to remove and replace lights at the Environmental Service Building for a cost of $12,935 with funds from the Environmental Service Building budget, 01-114. Uh, so Kyle did break this, Kyle Osmick, the owner did break this down into three groups. Our lights are failing in our MRF, so this is on our work floor. Um, they're old square, some of them are um, some of them are LED, some of them are not. So his uh, advice to us was to replace all of them with an LED light and go to a more round fixture with increased lumens so that we can have a little bit more visibility on the floor. We did take out some skylights in that area, which has affected visibility in there. So this is something that's des desperately needed. Kyle did break this out into three different quotes in case we wanted to look at that. My advice or recommendation to the board was we accept this and move forward. Questions for Mark? Move to approve at a cost of 12935 Second. Motion made by Commissioner Wright and seconded by Co Commissioner Nagel to approve at a cost of 12935 uh, Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And then the last item is consider approval of a revised two-lot preliminary plat, 21-08 by David Broll on property owned by First Class Builders to be known as DWB Edition. The McLeod County Planning and Advisory Commission recommended approval on December 15, 2021 with the recommendation that a subdivider's agreement requiring a culvert be installed on the North Access Driveway prior to recording the plat and that existing drainage shall not be affected nor changed. So we will work with the um, applicant and with the surveyor to note that area. There's a low area in there where drainage does run through. It's a swaled area that we will put on there as non-billable area on the plat. 
and this would come forward back in front of you as a final plat if approved. So David Brohl is present. The township did hear this request in October. There were some changes that were made to this. Originally it was a three lot preliminary plat application um, due to some concerns with adjacent landowners and the willingness of the applicant. Mr. Brohl did bring this back as a two lot preliminary plat. What township is it in? This is in Lynn Township. Thank you. Mark, any specific uh, conditions that need, we need to put on today? No, we, we can't condition a plat. That's the subdividers agreement that asks for these improvements to be made prior to the plat being recorded. And so that is the nature of what a subdivider's agreement does. So um, if the final plat is approved, Mr. Bro will have to have those improvements done. Obviously, it's just one improvement. He has agreed to put that culvert in on the north side to allow for that drainage from that field to run through that swaled area. Very good. Move to approve. Uh, motion made by Commissioner Nagel to approve. Is there a second? second. Second by Commissioner Luthans. Any discussion? Question I have marked that North Access driveway, that, is that a sole owned private driveway? Yes, it is, and it's currently in. So he would do some improvements to that driveway to get back to the far east north lot. And on the north side, it runs through a low area that Mr. Broll has agreed to put a culvert in there and build up that driveway just to maintain flow. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Number eight, county recorder, Mike and, Le and Lynette. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. On uh, January 6th, I gave you a notice that I um, will not be filing, refiling for election on my, this is my end of my fifth term, and I've been in the office for 37 years, um, 20 years almost as recorder. So um, a few years ago, by law, um, the, or the law was changed that certain county officials have to notify the county board of their intent or not to file in the next election and it has to be a certain number of days before the primary, and I have done that. And also in that law, and Mike will talk to you about that, um, you have the option to leave the position elected or you can make it appointed at this time. Lynette, about how many of the recorders are appointed and how many are elected throughout the state, do you know? Is it about half and I half? Think, I think it's a little less than half. I'm not real sure, though. I'd have to check that. A little less, less than half, half are elected? Are appointed. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a really hard decision for me to make. It's, it, it's been um, 37 years of my life being here. Um, my husband retired last year, and I'm jealous of him. So <laughs> <laughs> together we have 70-some years together that we both spent here at the county. So it's just Thank a you. time for me to step back and um, retire. So... Not sure when I'll do that, if it'll be the end of the year or sooner, I have no idea, but I had to take this step first, which was a really hard decision for me. So. Thank you very much, Lynette. We were able to share that with the department head group last week, and of course, Lynette notified the board via letter first, and um, we appreciate your efforts. You know that. We did write a media release. We had Lynette help myself and Liz send that out to all of our staff so they know what's going on. It is a change. Um, and then myself and the county attorney met after you and I talked and just we're looking over the elected versus appointed options. And um, you had been working on that over the past week, so thank you. I will also let you know that you asked how many people are appointed as a county recorder right now. We know that that's in progress for a lot of counties. That's a, a pretty hot topic at the um, the County Administrator Association, I know that several are working on it, and you hear about it as well, I'm sure, through your County Attorney Association. So thank you for coming here today because we just thought that it would be good if the three of us could all talk to you about it at the same time. So what I have now passed out, oh, and, and the way in the past thank you, that, that county rate recorders and to some extent county auditor treasurers County auditors, county treasurers, county auditor treasurers have become appointed is through special legislation or, or through a, a, uh, a referendum type of situation. 
what the current law is in Minnesota, and it was enacted in 2019, is that if the position of auditor, treasurer, auditor, treasurer, re recorder become vacant, or you get a notice that they are not in intending to refile, thus you would be creating a vacancy, you have the right to consider a, a, to appoint that rather than to have it an elective office. And the reason that you would do that is that al although it's a very important function, it's a ministerial rather than a policy making type. A, a recorder doesn't have the option of saying, well, I'm, I'm going to allow this kind of mortgage and not that kind of a mortgage to, to be recorded. But they have to, it's a, so it's a ministerial function more, more so than a policy making uh, function. There are, and it's, it's, it's about a half of, of the counties that have done something about creating fewer elective offices, more appointive offices. Um, there is also an option to, to make the civil portion of the county attorney's uh, office to be an appointive office. And I too have let you, you know that I'm not gonna run again and I don't think that there's any any county in the state that has split the office in, in two yet, but that would be an option that you would have also. But what I wanted to, to present to you is, is the uh, possible re resolution that you would consider for today. This would not be the final action. What would take place after this would be that this would be published two times, once a week in the official uh, publication of the county, which, which is the Glencoe paper here, and then it would be set on for a meeting. And if you want to do that, I would su suggest that you set it on for the 15th of February. And there would be a chance for public in input. Then you would vote whether to make it appointive or to not. If you made it appointive and the public didn't like that decision, they would have the right to file a request a, a petition within 30 days to have a referendum on it. And that petition would, would have to be agreed to by 10% of the people that voted in the last election, and I'm not sure if it's general or, or whatever it was, but, but there's a statutory rate requirement. Um, so the, the reason that they give you the 104 days that Lynette was talking about, well, I don't think that she mentioned the 104 days, is so that you can go through this process. And, and the reason that I, I created this is not because I think you ought to do it or I don't think you ought to do it. I think you ought to be totally aware and you ought to make the, the decision. And yes, there are benefits and, and there are light liabilities for, for both the board and, and the office holder. Uh, once she's your employee, she's your employee, uh, appointee it's your baby. I mean, you're responsible for her. And the other side of the coin is, is that once she's appointed rather than e e elected, she's responsible to, to, to you. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Mike, we do have a statutory requirement to have a recorder appointed or elected, one or the other. Correct? Right. <clears throat> is there is there many, is, is that a role that can be incorporated with another one or does that always have to stay separate? You know, it it can be in, incorporated with the treasurer, it, and and I don't know of any counties that have done that. Um, mainly, it's been the the offices that have been combined have been the auditor treasurer, mm -hmm. and we did that 10, 12 years ago. Also, Mr. Chair, Mike, we are only asking the board to consider the recorder position right now, correct? Because that's the only one that's being vacated in that capacity. I just want to make sure that it's understood that we're not talking about the auditor treasurer. Correct. Thank Correct. You. And the auditor treasurer was required to give you notice and she, she gave you, you notice that she intended to, to file. Or else the same situation could apply to her, but it, it does not. And the reason that the state is doing this is that to, to make a change it's a whole lot better to do it when, when the position is vacant and everybody understands what's, what the positions are gonna be with the incoming 
rather than trying to change something in, in the middle of the street. Any more questions or comments for? So what is, where do we go from here? I guess that's, or, or where do we want to go from here? Do we want to put it on a workshop or, or what do we, what do we want to do? Board? Well, this topic has been around for years, really. Um, we've, we've talked about it um, and uh, it always came to the same um, comment in the end of the discussion that this is something you only do when you know that that office is going to be vacant. And here's our opportunity if we want to um, move forward with with that. And so I, um, I guess the only way to test the waters is to is to, to, to head down that road. Um, and uh, if we're serious about making that change, so the door is open. Uh, so I think we should at least at least uh, fully explore our options. And if it requires uh, adopting this notice of intent, um, then I think that's where we need to be at. Um, I guess, and I would just echo what Commissioner Wright said, that now is obviously the time. We're, we're fortunate that we have talked about this somewhat, even with the recorder over the past couple of years and the auditor, so we have a foot up on it. So, um, um, so what we could do today then is, is we could vote on a letter of an, or to intent or to do the, to proceed you could adopt this and if, if you notice what the headline is is or the header is is notice of intent to consider it doesn't mean you're, you're, you're going to do it it means that you are are starting down that path and if you decide to do it fine and if you decide not to do it fine but you will then have a public hearing and the reason that I'm, I'm su suggesting that you do that at at on the February 18th meeting is rather selfish because I'm not going to be here or the February 15th is that I'm not going to be here on the February 1st and I think you kind of want me here for this but Agreed. but if you want to go ahead without me you're God nope. bless you <laughs> and oh, we'll have you here. if you would like mr. chair I can read this um, recommended proposed re sorry proposed resolution go ahead the proposed resolution brought to the board is notice of intent to consider the following proposed resolution the McLeod County Board of Commissioners does hereby create the Office of Appointed McLeod County Recorder and eliminate the Office of Elected McLeod County Recorder effective January 2, 2023 or such earlier date if the office becomes vacant and the authority for that change would be Minnesota Statutes 375A.1205 and 375A.10. Any questions on the resolution? Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I will move uh, that we uh, proceed with proposed resolution as stated previously by County Administrator. Motion made by Commissioner Smalls to proceed with this resolution of intent. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Wright. Is there any more discussion? Just one quick clarification, Mike. We, we, there will be a regular if as we move along there will be a regular public hearing that meeting that you're talking about will be a uh, public hearing I mean you said it that way and I was just curious. well and and it's not really a public hearing let me re read the portion of the statute uh, before adopting of the resolution to provide for the appointment of an office as described the County Board must publish a proposed resolution notifying the public of its intent to consider the issue once each week <laughs> for two consecutive weeks in the official publication of the of the county following publication and prior to formally adopting the resolution the county board shall provide an opportunity at its next regularly meet uh, regular meeting for public comment relating to the issue so it's not a public hearing it's a it's going to be at your normal hearing and it is going to be for the purpose of get, having the public give you input if they have it I just wanted to be clear I mean it, it, I just wanted to be clear on that on the public hearing part. Well, we have an awful lot of, of publication notices that are different than, than what I'm telling you right now. And this is specific to this statute. Okay. So if you're going to adopt an, an ordinance, you have a, a different set of rules you have to do about publication, mm -hmm. but this is its own beast. Okay. Any other questions for Mike or anyone? 
Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. So, Mr. Chair, should we, along with that motion, um, agree upon a time and, and the date to where we bring this up then? Set of um, newspapers uh, cover, you know, what, what we've approved here today that they can back that. that can program. we um, do that? And I agree. I think we should. And can we still have time to conform or to be able to do everything within them, them days and dates provided? Yeah, no, we're looking at Liz. <laughs> So, so you can do it on February 18th. That gives you enough time. But the question is, is do you, do you want to specify a time and date that it will be con considered at? And I think you want to put the date in there anyway. And if you can put in a time now, I think that's a good idea. February 15th. Oh, I'm sorry, 15th. Would be the date that we would recommend you consider it, correct? Correct. And that would be, you could say, 9 a.m. if you want, because as long as you don't do before that, you would be covered. Is and then it'll acceptable? be the first thing on your agenda after your, your consent agenda. Sure. Thank you. So the public notice will note that February 15th at 9 o'clock a.m. is the approximate time or after that we will review this um, proposed resolution, correct? Correct. Thank you. Uh, well, rather than to amend motions, we have passed the the, the um, intent to consider. So I would entertain a motion just to set that date and time. So you don't need to do that. You 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 can do that just clerically. You okay. you pass the motion. It's up to your Very administrator good. to get okay. it set for a date and time. Very but it's good, good to set That'll that. Work. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <sighs> County administration. Um, do you have anything before we go into calendars? I don't. I'll add to calendars, but I don't have anything. All right. Calendars, uh, Daryl, Commissioner Luthens. I'll move on to Commissioner Wright. Okay, thank you. Um, on the 7th, I uh, was an afternoon of interviews with the uh, Regional Extension Service on uh, uh, trying to fill a position, which is getting to be quite uh, difficult, like everybody else is having a hard time finding qualified people to fill spots. Uh, the 10th uh, Fairgrounds Commission meeting, a uh, lot of discussion there. Uh, maintenance, uh, roof on the horse barn needs a lot of repair, horticulture building. Um, looking at some different signage uh, for the fairgrounds and also uh, uh, something that I'm trying to get accomplished for this year is to rebuild the southeast entrance because it's such a confusing uh, uh, corner. Uh, with a lot of uh, uh, trailers going in and out of there during during the county fair, so trying to expand uh, that opening, and and we're looking for uh, users of the fairgrounds to maybe comment on how to look at perhaps restructuring or, or realigning um, uh, that. So, um, Mr. Merkins, maybe with your uh, uh, vast degree of input on so many topics, maybe you have some input for that as we try to figure that part out. So, um, and on the 11th department head meeting, budget meeting, uh, 13th uh, MRF meeting as well as uh, a meeting I held with property owners on judicial ditch number one, as we're in the final lap of a, a very large redetermination of benefits and there was some confusion on the McLeod County side. And so we met with several landowners last week, uh, along, as well as staff with, uh, from Renville County and, and our own. And, and I think we finally have um, our watershed lines in, in the right place uh, and that adoption is set for the, the beginning of February. So. And that pretty well wraps it up. All right, my time was a lot of it was spent on the at least on the fifth and the and the tenth on interviews as well for um, positions in the county uh, economic development and facility supervisor. Um, uh, along with, I also had department head on the eleventh, and I had uh, a MRF meeting on the thirteenth. So with that, uh, pretty much sums up my. Uh, I wasn't able to make the fair commission meeting. Had some other require some other requirements, but uh, didn't meet with Paul or talk to him on the phone. Got um, up to speed on that. But sounds like a lot of well, we knew this. Sounds like a lot of repairs and maintenance to keep that um, uh, facility going. Uh, we don't want to fall behind on it. And so please um, stop out there, take a look at it, let those uh, um, folks show you around. Uh, we had the board meeting and the workshop. Uh, I had a, a NACO call scheduled for public safety, budget committee, and then personnel matters as they have uh, came up, we addressed those. That's it. 
Okay, Mr. Chair, since our last board meeting, um, we uh, held a workshop here on uh, Tuesday the 4th, and then into last week, uh, at the uh, request of uh, Commissioner Kruger, I did uh, attend the MRC meeting uh, by Zoom, and uh, the takeaway from that meeting is uh, director of MRC is trying to put together a platform um, of um, issues that he wants uh, to use in his lobbying effort when the state legislature uh, resumes here in a matter of days. Okay. And then uh, Thursday the 13th, uh, CHS meeting uh, by Zoom, and that brings me to today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Just a clarification there, the director of MRC uh, is a lobbyist, so I mean that's why it's important. Uh, I mean it's a combined role, obviously limited budgets, but but it's a combined role, and that's why that was important. And thank you for attending, Sheila. Thank you. I have two things to add. I try always not to, but today I do. For one, Mr. Young surprised me because I didn't think he was going to drop that little note today about the fact he's not refiling. But that is a very big deal as we know in McLeod County. And I don't know the number of years that you've been here exactly, but I know it's almost the same number of years I've existed, so it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's really close. <laughs> one more year than what I've, or one less. One less. 30, I think it was May 6th or 7th of 87. It'll be a big impact on us, of course, to have Michael Young exiting McLeod County as county attorney um, and a big change. So. It's not that I didn't want to share it today. He is a big deal, but he pretty much told me not to yet. So we will prepare a media release for that as well, and I'm sure that you'll be wanting to talk to him. Um, so, but thank you, and um, we would have talked about you way more if you told me I could. <laughs> but we have kind of a big star here today with us. Paul Wright was elect, or nominated and won the 2021 Community Award <coughs> winner for Volunteer of the Year in Hutchinson, and that's a really big deal too. You <laughs> all you know that. that Paul spends a lot of his time um, helping kids with 4-H, with FFA, out in the field getting FFA stuff going. I see him out there when I'm driving by. Um, he has a whole entire grade of children in Hutchinson out to his farm every year. I think it's fourth graders, and it was probably my son's f favorite day of fourth grade. You're greatly appreciated, and you deserve the recognition. There's an event on February 4th. It is at the Crow River Winery. The Hutchinson Chamber of Commerce and Tourism is putting that on. You can um, register to attend if you want to join while Paul receives his award. Um, he's very deserving, and I just wanted to note that it was a good, good piece of news to share, and we need those right now. So thank you, Paul, and congratulations, and thank you, Mike. It's a hay bales, Paul. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Paul is usually pretty modest. I mean, what you hear he does, that's only a little, that's only the, the peak of the iceberg. He does a lot more as far as promoting kids, the fair extension, and, uh, and McLeod County, and most of all, he's, he's, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of him, so thank you. Well, thanks for all that, guys. Thank you. Okay. Ready sure. to do some more stuff here, if I can get to the right page. Can you all hear me okay? Okay. Thank you. Item A, uh, this is an item that we said would be on our agenda today, January 18th. Consider a request from City of Glencoe to remove the county-operated eight-yard recycling receptacles located in the City of Glencoe, south of the McLeod County Courthouse. On October 19th, Kruger moved, right seconded, and motion carried unanimous, unanimously to table this until today. However, we are still working on this with the City of Glencoe. Um, this is a popular topic in the newspaper, which I don't always think is accurately reflected of how we are actually working with the city of Glencoe and having good communication with them. Um, and I just want to note that Paul, or sorry, not Paul, Mark Teletsky and myself last week met with Kelly Brunkhorst from MnDOT at the suggestion of Mark Larson, the city administrator from Glencoe. Um, and we are trying to figure out a, a good solution to bring to you as our board. So I know that this was tabled until today. But Mark, if you want to come up and add, please do. But I don't know that Mark and I are ready to make a full suggestion because right now we are busy mapping out a new option. So can you talk about that, please? Yeah, absolutely. So with our meeting last week with MnDOT, it was a very constructive meeting. 
um, we're putting together a proposal that MnDOT can take to their management team for review, and then they would get back to us. It was a very good conversation, um, very appreciative of MnDOT's time to sit down with us and entertain the site um, on Armstrong and 8th, corner of Armstrong and 8th, just north and west of this facility. So with that being said, not sure how we want to proceed with the request from the city. We are working toward that. Um, and as we've spoke many, many times, it's not um, as simple because of the number of users that we have for those types of bins, uh, both residential and commercial. Uh, the business owners, those bins are intended just for township collection, but um, it has morphed into much more than that. Thank you. It's also on our workshop right after this today, right? That so is correct. So, Mike, how do we pull it from the table and put it back on? Well, you table it again, and, and the question is when you table it to, and whether or not you put a specific date or just say that no, no later than such and such a date, it'll be on the county board agenda. What did MnDOT say about when they would get, get back to you with, with some kind of... As soon as we get a proposal to them, they will take their management team the following Monday, so as far as when they'll get back to us, I can't answer that. My, I'm assuming they'll have to you know, digest whatever it is we put together. Some of the proposals we can talk about in the workshop, but it, it's just more logistics in regards to maintenance of that site. So how long do you need, Mark? Well, what's a safe? I mean, I don't want to yeah, say, I know you're I don't want to say a month when you need six months. You know? I mean, I think by April we should have something that we can work on end of April. Yeah, why don't you table it until your second meeting in April? You aren't going to move anything in the middle of winter anyway. Right. right. And it's been a goal of mine, excuse me, uh, Commissioner, it's been a goal of mine to either to find a spot that doesn't interrupt service. I mean, we're not kicking the can down the road. It may, it may look that way, but we're not. I, I mean, I, I have not. I'm willing to move the dumpsters. I've said it, and I've, it's been in the paper, but I, it's, it's going to be moved to a place where service is good, and, and you commented that it's morphed into more of a, a regional district type uh, uh, situation. So we want to make sure where we go, we can stay there and there's is equally or better service provided that we have right now. And um, as far as uh, um, making it look um, respectable, I, lack of a better word, uh, we're, we've taken this all into consideration. So it's not a, um, it's not a delaying tactic by no means. I'm, I'm kind of happy to where we're going, and the reason we're even commenting this much on it is to show that there has been good faith forward effort in getting it done. So that's all I, that's all I really am. All right. Mr. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion, and that's going to shut it down. So okay. <laughs> you got something more. I just want to give you the date. It would be if Liz provided April 19th is your second board. Move the table until April 19th. Motion's been made by Thank Commissioner you. Nagel to table this uh, till April 19th. Second. Motion has been seconded by Commissioner Smalls. Is there any more discussion? Mr. No. Chair, um, could you amend that to honor before April 19th in case that it is completed before that date? Honor or not it doesn't matter? Is that all? Is, we can do it? Sure. We can actually say it that way? In case you would have to review some sort of agreement with MnDOT, that's my reason for asking. Sure. Thank you. Okay, the motion would state then that it would be on or before April 19th. Good. Yep. Any more discussion? Can't discuss it. Can't discuss it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even though we already did. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Thank you. Item B, consider adopting resolution 22-CB-07 Commissioner committee appointments. This is com in your packet of information. Move to approve. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Nagel, seconded by Commissioner Wright to approve the committee appointments. Uh, resolution 22 CB07. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Thank you. Item C consider adopting. Resolution 22-CB-08, Staff Committee Appointments, also in your packet. Board. Move to approve. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Wright, seconded by Commissioner Nagel. To approve Resolution 22-CB-08, Staff Committee Appointments. 
Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item D, consider adopting resolution 22-CB-09 citizen committee appointments, also listed in your packet. Move to approve. I'll second it. Motion has been made by Commissioner Wright, seconded by Commissioner Kruger to adopt resolution 22-CB-09 citizen com committee appointments. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Item E, consider approval of a letter of support to the Metropolitan Council Transportation Advisory Board for the inclusion and adoption of the Highway 212 Rural Freight Mobility and Safety Project and MnDOT's Minnesota Highway Freight Program as presented in the Metropolitan Council's proposed plan amendment. Very good. Mr. Chair, move to approve. Motion made by Commissioner Smalls to approve the letter. Is there a second? I'll second that as well. Um, motion's been made by Commissioner Smalls and seconded by Commissioner Kruger. Discussion? I, I just a question for, for Sheila. Did, did those, the other information that I had for the other letter, were these, were these combined into one? What's the yes. same? What's the same letter? Because it's important. So Carver, Carver County is in the metropolitan area, so the, this is very important to uh, to work on the Met Council and um, to make sh there there's, seems to be money becoming available and to get it put in the right places. Not that there's other n needs than than 212, but 212 is that is so close to being done. I can't hardly stand it. But but at any rate. Um, uh, it, it, it is important. I, I, I reached out to all our legislators, uh, anybody I could think of in an elected capacity to send, to send letters, and there's been a willingness to do so. So that, that's just a comment to the motion. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item E, notification of board workshop following the board meeting on February 1st. 2022 at the McLeod County Government Center here at 520 Chandler Avenue North, Glencoe, Minnesota. That's all. Open forum. Anyone wish to address the board for the good of the county? Press relations. Karen, do you have anything? Thank you. Our next board meeting will be held on February 1st, 2022 at 9 a.m. here at the Government Center, 520 Chandler Avenue North in Glencoe. Um, motion to adjourn or recess. So moved, Mr. Chair. Motion made by right. Commissioner Smalls. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Luthers. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're recessed. <clears throat>